So let's define cellulitis. Cellulitis is an acute bacterial infection of the dermis and the subcutaneous tissue. And looking at the causative organisms, it's most commonly caused by Streptococcus pyogenes as well as Staphylococcus aureus. Both of these are gram-positive organisms. With Staphylococcus aureus, it is the most common cause of cellulitis. Staphylococcus aureus is important because it about 25 to 30 percent of the human population will have colonization of Staphylococcus aureus. This means that Staphylococcus aureus would live happily on their skin. But this can lead to an infection if it penetrates the skin. And less common organisms include Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is commonly found in contaminated hot tubs, sponges, or nail puncture, as well as Aeromonas hydrophila, which is normally found in fresh water, Erysipelathrix rusiopathiae, which is normally found in butchers with butchers, vets, as well as fish handlers, and Echinella corridans, which is normally found following a human bite or fist injury. So in terms of the prevalence of cellulitis, about 3% of cases that lead to attendance to accident emergency departments in the United Kingdom are due to cellulitis. And lower limb cellulitis accounts for about 55,000 hospital admissions. And this is during 2011 to 2012. The average length of stay in a hospital for a patient is about 10 days. So if we break that down, 10 days would amount to 400,000 bed days every year. So annually, annually, the NHS spends about 170 to 250 million pounds every year on the admission and treatment of patients with cellulitis. The recurrence of cellulitis is very common and, as, and for every occasion of cellulitis you have, this increases your risk of having another reoccurrence. And the prevalence of cellulitis is increasing every year. The reason why it's thought this is happening is due to the fact that there's increased levels of obesity, which we'll speak about later because obesity is a risk factor for cellulitis, as well as an aging population. Age is also a risk factor and increased age is a risk factor of cellulitis. So I was telling you about the fact that recurrence increases your risk. Well, if you have a case of cellulitis, you are in, have an increased likelihood of having another event. So looking at this study from 2018, we looked at 37,000 patients presenting with their first episode of lower limb cellulitis. During follow-up, it was found that 5,000 of these patients had at least one other event. So risk factors of cellulitis, first of all, there's age, as well as obesity, venous insufficiency, trauma, conditions such as eczema, dermatitis, athlete's foot, and oedema. Another, another condition that we have to think about is lymphedema. Patients with lymphedema are at special risk of developing cellulitis. And the reason for this is there's disturbances in lymph drainage. And because of this, there's associated an impaired host response to an infection. So it's reported that within one year of a, pa of a patient having lymphedema, 28% of these patients will develop cellulitis and a quarter of this 28% would lead to a hospital admission requiring IV antibiotics. So you see the risk associated with this. If you talk about the patients that cellulitis occurs with, the onset of cellulitis most commonly occurs with patients between the age of 40 to 60 years old. If we consider gender, it's normally equal across both male and female individuals. And the most, the highest predisposing factor for a person developing cellulitis is if they have had a previous case of cellulitis. So recurrence rates are as high as eight to 20% with patients. So why is cellulitis such an important condition? The most important thing is 
the fact that it can lead to life-threatening conditions. And if I told you cellulitis can lead to death, you, you wouldn't understand, re realistically, not many people, people underestimate how dangerous cellulitis is and the fact that it can lead to complications that could cause death. So how could this occur? So one of the most concerning complications of cellulitis is necrotizing fasciitis. This is a destructive and rapidly progressive soft tissue infection and it starts to involve the deep subcutaneous tissues and the fascia and it can lead to extensive necrosis and gangrene of the skin and underlying structures. Necrotizing fasciitis can easily lead to limb, limb amputations if they're not treated effectively and immediately. As well, the, another complication is myositis, which is inflammation of the muscle due to an infection, as well as sepsis. Sepsis is a potentially life-threatening condition, and this is caused by the body's response to an infection, and it's something I went through extensively uh, in my other lecture, focusing on sepsis, as well as su subcutaneous abscesses. You've also got a condition called post-streptococcal gromulonephritis, and this is a kidney disease that develops 10 to 14 days after a skin or throat infection. And it's not a condition caused by the bacteria itself, but the body's response to fighting that infection, very similar to sepsis. Chronic complications of cellulitis would include persistent leg ulcerations, lymphedema, which we said also increases your risk of developing cellulitis. So it's sort of this, you have one condition and it increases your risk of the other, which, increase, which worsens the other. And lymphedema is where there's swelling in parts or part of the body that occurs when your lymph system's not working properly, your lymphatic system's not working properly. And as well as this, you always have the risk of recurrent cellulitis. Cases occur, recur in about 8 to 20% 8 to of cases.